Hello, my name is Captain Kelly Muniz, Commanding Officer of Media Relations Division of the Los Angeles Police Department. This critical incident community briefing is intended to provide you with information about an officer-involved shooting that occurred in Rampart Division in the City of Los Angeles on September 11th, 2022 at around 3.25 a.m. You're about to see relevant video footage and learn about other evidence and police procedures related to the case so you can have a better understanding of what occurred based on what we know right now. The LAPD conducts very thorough use of force investigations, which typically require investigators to interview multiple witnesses, view numerous hours of video footage, and analyze a significant amount of forensic evidence. We are still at the very early stages of this investigation, which can often take up to a year to complete, and our understanding of the incident may change as this additional evidence is collected, analyzed, and reviewed. We also do not draw any conclusions about whether the officers acted consistent with our policies and the law until all the facts are known and the investigation is complete. A word of caution, the images and information you're about to see may be disturbing. When a police officer uses force to arrest a suspect or defend against an attack, it can be graphic and difficult to watch. In addition, there may be strong language used by those shown in the video. Viewer discretion is advised, especially for young children and sensitive viewers. Rampart patrol officers were stopped at a traffic light at the intersection of Rampart Boulevard and 6th Street when they heard gunfire. A portion of the shooting in progress was captured on video from a nearby security camera. The officers initiated a backup request as they observed the suspect running toward their location. While the suspect was running through the intersection, the officers saw that he was in possession of a handgun. That suspect was later identified as Leo Vani Luna. Here is the corresponding radio broadcast. Let me get a backup. From our units, join anyone requesting a backup. Correction, any unit in the vicinity, join one is requesting a backup. South Alvarado and Westlake Avenue. Any unit in the vicinity, join anyone requesting backup, your unit supervisor, Alvarado and Westlake. The officers got out of their police vehicle and unholstered their firearms. As Luna ran past the officers, still armed with the handgun, he was ordered to stop. However, Luna did not comply and an officer-involved shooting occurred. Luna continued running away as the officers gave chase on foot. As Luna crossed the street and approached the east sidewalk, he dropped his handgun on the street. Luna stopped, turned back toward his handgun, and picked it up. While picking up his handgun and facing the officers, a second officer-involved shooting occurred. Luna was struck by gunfire and after running a short distance, collapsed to the ground where he was taken into custody. A portion of this incident was captured by surveillance video from a nearby business.
A portion of this incident was also captured by a witness on their cellular phone. portion of this incident was also captured on the officer's body-worn video. Body-worn video cameras are used by most officers assigned to field duties. They are worn at chest level and capture a general perspective within line of sight from that angle. The angle of the camera prohibits viewers from seeing everything the officers saw and experienced. Upon activation, both audio and video will turn on. However, body-worn video cameras have a buffer of video without audio from the previous two minutes prior to activation. This feature is designed to capture incidents that occur suddenly where an officer doesn't immediately activate the camera. Here is body-worn video from the officers involved in this incident. We have a suspect down from the far south rampart and he's hold Put it. Your Put your hands to the side! Put your hands to the side! Get back! Get back. So much a security shot. Yeah, hold on. Hold it right there, partner. 291. We're in front of 5 Southwest Lake. We have a suspect down. Get an RA. Stand by out. Cor Coronado and 6. And a unit to respond to 6 and Rampart. Secure a shot. Alright, right. Go ahead. Go. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Nice and slow. Okay. Nice and slow. 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 Nice and
The Los Angeles Fire Department paramedics responded to the scene and determined Luna to be deceased. Investigators recovered Luna's loaded semi-automatic pistol at scene and booked it as evidence. Investigators learned that the pistol was a ghost gun. Ghost guns are firearms manufactured without serial numbers and require no background checks for purchase, making them untraceable to law enforcement authorities. Ghost guns are generally homemade from polymer plastic or metal that need minor modifications to make them operable. Leo Vani Luna was a 35-year-old resident of Los Angeles. In the next several months, the LAPD will continue to investigate and analyze this incident. We will continue interviewing any new witnesses that may come forward and complete any forensic tests. After the investigation is complete, our Critical Incident Review Division will forward their findings to the Chief of Police, who will make his recommendation to the Civilian Board of Police Commissioners. The board will evaluate the evidence to determine whether the officer's tactics, drawing and exhibiting a weapon, and use of deadly force in this instance met the high standards expected of all Los Angeles police officers. If you would like more information on how the LAPD investigates all serious uses of force, visit lapdonline.org, where you can also find the LAPD's use of force policy and procedures. Thank you for taking the time to view this critical incident community briefing.